Good morning, everyone. Welcome, friends, old and new. It is great to be together on this beautiful day, and uh, we got a lot going on. The parish news has doubled in size as we move towards the fall, as there's lots of good things coming up. So take a look at that as uh, you have some time later on today. And uh, the connection card is your ticket to anything you need from me, the church office. If you have somebody you want added to the prayer list or the prayer chain, or if you're visiting with us and would like to be added to our mailing list, Please fill out the connection card with the appropriate information and you can place it in the offering plate later on in our service when the offerings are received. There's also a green envelope today in the parish news. Our uh, 50th anniversary focus today during our Matters of Importance talks about a ministry that is an important part of our community, iDignity. And uh, so we'll get an update on them and the envelope is if... Uh, you want to support that work in that ministry, it's near and dear to your heart, use that green envelope for iDignity uh, after you see the update later on in our service today. We are having our treasure and tag sale at the end of the month, August 25th and 26th. Uh, starting on August 14th, you can start bringing your items to the parish hall for the treasure and tag sale. We are not taking clothes though, no clothes for the treasure and tag sale. Our early childhood center Stepping Stones begins its new school year this week, and we pray God's blessings upon that. Uh, we had the school closed this past week to clean, to move classrooms, to give the teachers an opportunity to refresh. We had a, a beautiful uh, opening service with all of our staff here on Wednesday, and then on Friday we had meet the teacher with the families, especially the new families of the school. So looking forward to a new school year and praying for everyone who's going back to school this week. We're going to celebrate school and children in a couple of Sundays as we'll have uh, the blessing of the backpacks at this service in two weeks. Uh, the Sanctuary Choir is looking for anyone who wants to lend their musical voices to the choir. Take a look at the details for that. Leisure time, you have a potluck dinner on Tuesday night at 5 o'clock in the parish hall. Council leaders, we have a meeting on Thursday night at 7 o'clock in the administration building. And next Sunday is our next 50th anniversary guest preacher, Pastor Ron Lee, who served two interims here during times of transition, will be our preacher next Sunday. Miss Connie is on vacation today, and uh, she is not here, but we still have music, and she did play the music. She just played it ahead of time. She pre-recorded it, uh, so she'll be back with us next week. All right, it is the 10th Sunday after the Pentecost. We're into the double digits. We hear during the gospel lesson today, the miracle with the five loaves and the two fishes. We are also blessed today uh, to have a baptism at our service, little Andreas Del Toro. There's a New York connection here for me with this. Uh, one of little Andreas' family members I used to work with on the Synod Council back in the Metro New York Synod uh, years ago, Maria Del Toro, sitting in the back there. Welcome, welcome to the family. We rejoice with you today. So, let us take a moment of silent prayer. And then we're going to rise and join together in our opening song, All My Hope. Please rise.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We admit, O Lord, that we often do not freely respond to your grace. We admit that we have not always shared compassionate concern. We admit that we have not always considered the needs of others before our own, nor how you might use us and our gifts for their welfare. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus, Son of God and Son of David, kept God's eternal covenant. He paid the price with his suffering and death for you so that grace might be freely offered to you. Rest assured, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Yeah. 
be with you. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your son Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. We've served 3,618 clients since our formation, and uh, one of my favorite clients, I should say, or one of the things we did was client W, who came to us. He was uh, over 70. He was a retired veteran. He had never had an ID, and he did not have a birth certificate. He was given away at birth and raised in the rural South, which is not unusual from those circumstances. It involved investigation of his birth records, his school, uh, his baptism records, his school records uh, from a you know, rural uh, southern state, which we eventually got. And what was critical was he was blind and needed an identification in order to have his surgery performed. And that was a successful uh, client that stood out in my mind. And uh, I think one of the ways that I dignity and, and St. Stephen has impacted me the most is, I remember back in 2018 when the Seminole County Jail called and asked if there was any way we could work with them to help bring their, their inmates into full identification because they would get out and be set up for failure because they would have not be able to get a job, their terms of probation is 30 days. And, and so they asked to meet with us and I said, you know, sure we could do that and they gave their presentation. They were trying to cut down on recidivism and all of those things. And, and inside my head, being the victim of a violent crime perpetrated by a total stranger, inside me screaming, no, 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 this is way outside my comfort zone. And Jared looked up at me and said, well, Janine, you'd be in charge of implementing this. What do you think? And I said, we can do it. You know, I mean, that was not what was going on inside my head, but, but anyway, uh, four and a half years down the road and 181 inmates that I personally brought to full identification later, I can say it was life-changing for me because the um, understanding I got for the position that they are in, for the hardships, their mess their lives are, the, the, the plate that they've been handed, is has brought me such peace on what happened to me so many years ago. And I kind of think this of of this is like a modern day Good Samaritan because I'm the last person that I could have ever thought would have been in that jail, you know, a white middle class woman that was traumatized by a very violent act, uh, you know, years ago. And I'm in there and working with the same type of people that, that did that. And, and uh, it has brought me such peace. And so I think that, you know, it, you know instead of, if they closed, gently closed and locked a door for me that has been that has been, um, I've been slamming and it's been coming back and bouncing and hitting me in the face for years.
The first reading is from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call the nations that you do not know, and the nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could not wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Alleluia, alleluia. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the, when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. There are times in our scripture readings where there are little details, maybe in cast-off comments, that set up the main point of the passage, but upon deeper look, those little details in those minor insignificant topics or, or sentences end up opening up a whole new world to us when it comes to seeing and understanding what Jesus did and continues to do for us. In the gospel lesson, we hear as it opens up, now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there. Now, if you opened up in a Bible to this passage, it would say, now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there. You would have to go and go back in the Bible to look and figure out what the this is. So the lectionary for us, in order to tune us in right away, adds the explanation when Jesus heard about the beheading 
of John the Baptist, he withdrew. Now I want you to think about that for a minute. Why did Jesus withdraw? His dear friend, his cousin, the forerunner, one of the people closest to him throughout his life, was unjustly put to death because of politics, because of greed, because of fear. Imagine, if you would, as Jesus was human, as well as being God, what he must have been feeling. Thus, the reason why he withdraws. He goes off to be by himself, to mourn, to be angry, to wrestle with how wrong the situation was, and I'm quite sure he needed a good cry. It's these moments in Scripture, it's these little details that we hear about Jesus that become the aha moment for us in understanding why our faith is so beautiful and how powerful it is to call upon the name of Jesus. Because he gets us. He understands us. How often have you found yourself in your life filled with sorrow and grief? You've wanted to do nothing but withdraw. Move away from everyone and everything. You want to wrestle with those emotions. You want to cry. You want to struggle. You want to begin the process of healing. Right? That was the mindset. That was the backdrop for this incredible miracle of feeding the multitudes. Jesus was in pain. And Jesus was mourning. Now, in Matthew's gospel, Matthew often uses the crowds as a, a way of setting the context for which he would tell us more about Jesus and what Jesus would do. And the crowds are presented in different lights. Oftentimes, the crowds are presented more as the foil or the antagonist. They're not necessarily there and following around Jesus for all those right spiritual and religious leaders. They're reasons. They're curious. They want to know a little bit more. But they come with all their own baggage and all their own background. So in this passage, we hear that the crowds are still stalking out Jesus. Even though Jesus needs to withdraw, even though he wants to be by himself, they're still following him because they've heard about his, his teachings. They've seen some of his miracles, and they want it for themselves. The crowds are needy. They want something from Jesus, irregardless of how Jesus is feeling and what Jesus is personally going through. And if you think about crowds that surround us in our world today, there are a lot of crowds that I think Matthew would have had a field day with if he could use them to further write the gospel, right? We hear about crowds just this past week in my former home of New York in Union Square where because this influencer is giving away free PlayStation 5s, the crowds get so out of hand that 60 people are arrested, several people are hurting, and for hours there is chaos going on in the city. Crowds are often filled with their own selfishness, their desire to get what they want when they want it. We hear a lot about crowds trying to influence or persuade what we know as mob mentality, right, leading to more divisiveness, or crowds wanting what they want regardless of what the rules say. If the rules are good and serve their purpose, that's fine, but if they don't, Forget about the rules. The rules don't matter. And crowds moving things, mob mentality, trying to persuade the greater, the greater scene, not out of what may be fact or truth, but just feeling an emotion. And so there are crowds constantly around us with their own attitude, with their own agendas, with things that aren't often what is best for the world around us. Yet the crowds keep surrounding us. The crowds keep coming. The crowds keep trying to change the state of things that surround us. Now I, during my ministry, have had 
those moments where what's going on in my personal life, what I'm dealing with at home or with my family or with things that aren't part of serving the church, they've become all consuming for me. And inevitably during those times there are still those pastoral calls where I'm called upon to care for people in the midst of their crises and their emergencies. And I have to admit to you, there have been those times when I've been dealing with my own personal stuff where I've been tempted to ignore the call. Where I haven't had the energy or the desire to be there and focus on the needs of others when I myself am so much in need. And so that, that temptation exists not to have that compassion, not to show that care, that others so desperately need and are looking for when they are struggling with sorrow and grief. What we see in the gospel lesson is what teaches us and tells us why Jesus is our Savior. Because even in spite of his own sorrow and grief, even in spite of his deep desire to withdraw and be by himself and find that space that he needed when he saw the crowds, what did we hear in the gospel lesson? He had compassion for them. And he cured their sick. A powerful reminder to us again what motivates and drives the heart of our God. To serve and show compassion to us even in the midst of his own struggle and pain. So much so that even when those who were closest to him, his disciples, when they tried to shoo the crowds away as the evening went on, they're trying to protect Jesus. Enough is enough, Lord. Send them home. It's a deserted place. Let them go into the towns and feed themselves. Jesus says, no. What do we got to eat? And even though Matthew's gospel doesn't give us all the details, this is the only miracle that's found in all four gospels. So we know other details from the other three gospels. And who is it, do we find out, who has the five loaves and the two fish? It's a boy. Remember how often in scripture those disciples tried to shoo away the children? Didn't think they belonged in the adult stuff of religion and faith. But it's a child who comes and provides the tools that Jesus needs in order to show the depth of his love and compassion for the needs of the crowd. And not only is there enough food, but there's an abundance, overflowing. 5,000 men plus the women and the children. Eight, nine, 10,000 possible people ate, and there's 12 basketfuls left over. And this message of compassion, this message that moves God to do something when we are struggling with sorrow and grief is the message that we hear over and over again throughout the Bible. In our Old Testament lesson today, the prophet Isaiah begs of the, the reader, begs of all of us, come to the waters, the waters that never end. Come to the food, the food that is eternal. In the midst of those times in our lives when we are struggling and maybe paralyzed and tempted to go off by ourselves in the midst of our pain. He says, come to the waters of baptism where God meets us constantly. Come to the sacramental presence of Jesus, his body and blood, where we have a food that lasts eternally. Come and let God act in your grief and wipe away your tears. And when God acts for us, even in the midst of his own grief, God then moves us to act for others in the midst of our sorrow. That's the beautiful thing about it. As our sorrow gets redirected when Jesus acts for us, and then when Jesus acts through us, we're able to move away from our sorrow and start focusing on the needs of others. So the heart of God is moved to action. And in the midst of sorrow, action brings healing. The actions of Jesus on the way to the cross and the empty tomb, and the acts of Jesus through us 
by his grace, his love, and his forgiveness. Amen. Please stand. turning your attention to the baptismal font. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Hear the testimony of Holy Scriptures concerning baptism. Jesus says in Matthew 28, 
Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you, for your children, and for all who are far away. And Jesus again in John chapter 3 says, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Who brings this child to be baptized? And how is this child to be named? Andres Lautaro del Toro. Andreas Lautaro del Toro, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Through water and the word, the Holy Spirit calls us to walk a new life in God. Nourished by the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers, we are all called to strengthen and uplift the baptismal faith of everyone in our community. So parents, sponsors, and fellow congregational members, I ask, will you commit yourselves to providing for Andreas's growth in the knowledge and the love of the Lord? Will you teach the Holy Scriptures, the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments? Do you intend to act in this way for all children and for the sake of Jesus and our life together? If so, answer, we do with the help of God. Therefore, I ask you all as the family of faith that we call St. Stephen to profess, profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God and the powers of this world that rebel against God and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord? who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, answer, I do. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks we give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by the word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given praise and honor through Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay. He's a little squirm around. You have one of the coolest names for a baptism. All right. Andreas Lataro del Toro. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, I know, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great job. Great job. I'll, I'll wipe it off. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Andreas with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Andreas, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Give it to the sister. And receive this white garment to show that Christ has taken away and borne your sin and so has placed upon you his perfect righteousness. 
Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And you, Andreas, the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Let us warmly welcome little Andreas into our family of faith. Woohoo! That's for you, buddy. Okay, we did good. You can blow that out. There's certificates for everybody. That's for that. All right, you can return to your seats. As our baptismal family returns to their seats, we prepare for prayer. And in our prayers this morning, we include the brother of Eric Rose, Sean Rose, who is undergoing heart surgery later this week. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. You gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love throughout the world. Guide us in the mission of the gospel through word and action. Hear us, O God. You cherish your creation, from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourish creatures, and rise us up to care for all you have created. Hear us, O God. You desire peace and justice in the world. Instill within all political leaders your desire support the work of international peace organizations and provide relief for those in war-torn areas. Hear us, O God. You comfort those who are hurting, accompany those who are alone, heal those who are sick, provide for all who hunger or thirst, console the bereaved, bring joy to the sorrowful, and attend all who care who call on you, especially those we name at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place us within communities for mutual support and love. Provide for feeding ministries and food banks in our area that we may share your abundance with all who hunger. Hear us, O God. You have placed before us examples of faithful living who have witnessed to your promise throughout time and space. Rouse us by their lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated as we have the opportunity now to give back that which God has given to us by receiving the offerings. the 
be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks unto the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise. it is truly good right and nourishing that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you Holy Lord Almighty Father everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord who by his death and resurrection opened to all people your gracious promises of eternal life Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from blasphemous wind, wind on. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for the boundless mercy and grace you have shown in sending your Son to bear our sins and be our Savior. Gathered in his name, we pray that you would strengthen us to rely not on our own strength, but on your love and forgiveness. Strengthen and guide us to invite others to your grace in the way we think, speak, and act. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his son to be our savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray together. Our, our Father. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Wow. 
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you that you have again refreshed us with the gift of your holy body and blood in this sacrament. Continually strengthen our faith that we may depart from your presence with peace and joy and the knowledge that we are reconciled to the Father. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Darkness fails his lovely face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every hot and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ's solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Oath his covenant, his blood sustain me in the raging flood. When all supports are washed away, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone, redeemed to stand before the throne. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Go in peace, share the harvest.